Faisal Salam. Thank you for joining us today for an overview of Cloud Volumes ONTAP. Cloud Volumes ONTAP is a powerful, cost-effective, and easy-to-use data management solution for cloud workloads. Cloud Volumes ONTAP is now available in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. When you deploy Cloud Volumes ONTAP, we leverage the cloud provider's compute for our data management software and disk options for data storage. Let's talk about some of the benefits of Cloud Volumes ONTAP. The primary reason is data protection, utilizing our NetApp snapshot capability. These are instant point-in-time recovery points for your data. They're easy to configure, non-performance impacting, and simple to use. Another feature is our data efficiencies, specifically our ability around data deduplication, thin provisioning, compression, and data compaction. Our technologies reduce the overall amount of storage required for your data and reduce your costs in the cloud. Another built-in feature is our ease of data replication and data portability. Our snap mirror technology makes it very easy to move data from on-prem into the public cloud, leveraging cloud volumes on tap. Let's look at the various CVU deployment options in AWS. The first one is single node. In this configuration, data is unavailable during a node failure. The common use cases could be snap mirror destination or backup and archive. The second type, is HA deployment in a single availability zone. This protects against failures within a single availability zone. The HA nodes are in a placement group spread across distinct underlying hardware. The HA node serves data if the partner goes offline and it does not require floating IP addresses as the configuration is in a single AZ. The third deployment type is a multi-AZ. This provides maximum protection against easy failures. It enables selection of three availability zones. The HA node serves data if the partner goes offline and floating IP addresses are required for cluster management, vServer management, SIFs, and NFS access. Floating IPs migrate between HA nodes should failures occur. So there are several things we should have a checklist of while planning out the CBO configuration in AWS. One of the things is finding out what region supports CBO. Choosing the right license type is also very important. You have a few options like pay as you go or a BYO license. Another step is selecting the correct instance type. There are many different instance types you could choose from, starting from the very basic EC2 instance types to the ones that support flash and a large amount of throughput. You should select the correct instance type based on a couple of factors. One step is looking at the application workloads and where they're gonna be hosted. And what throughput are you looking to attain? You also need to keep in mind the storage limits like the disk type. What is the maximum disk size? And that again decides how large an aggregate can grow. The disks are EBS volumes in AWS, and there is a limit on the number of disks you can have in an aggregate and also the number of aggregates. Let's look at the network preparation for deploying CBO. Network preparation is mainly focused on what type of deployment model you chose. In our case, choose a multi-AZ HA as a primary production deployment. So depending on the deployment, we need a number of IP addresses per node and also for the HA cluster. Also, we need to think about the floating IP addresses. Please bear in mind that all nodes, including the connector, the CBO nodes and mediator, all require outbound internet access on port 443, which is required for normal operation. For AWS, we also need to provide a transit gateway that provides connectivity for the floating IP addresses outside the VPC. Here are some of the post-deployment steps that we followed. We created an aggregate on node B to enable an active-active configuration. We also enabled things like DNS, NTP, the domain tunnel for active directory authentication to the CBO cluster as we would for on-prem deployments. Additional data SVMs can be created using a CLI or system manager. The CBO is also added to AIQUM for monitoring and to harvest and cloud insights for performance data collection. We also set up system and audit log forwarding to log services and we validated that the system is sending auto supports. Please bear in mind the software updates must be completed from within cloud manager and disks and aggregates must also be managed from Cloud Manager or not through the CLI or System Manager. Thank you for watching.